there's an experiment being conducted behind these locked gates. On any other wing, in any other jail, a prisoner swearing at an assistant governor would be facing disciplinary charges. But Hull Prison's A-Wing is testing a softly, softly regime on some of the most dangerous and disruptive inmates sent from long-term dispersal jails. But uh, McGannigan's not helping himself though, by just rowing and shouting and expecting me to go to... The special the unit, volatile from the start, had its biggest crisis when David McAllister, serving 19 years for armed robbery and assaults, escaped. His breakout came in July. This film was made in A-Wing last June. The prisoners arrive from punishment blocks all over the country. They've been in constant trouble, and this is an attempt to break the pattern. At a time when prison resources are stretched, the unit has cost nearly a million pounds and is heavily staffed. Patrick Mackay has come from the segregation block at Parkhurst. He served in five life sentences for manslaughter and robbery. Just to tell you that Mackay has arrived safely. No problems with the escort. Perhaps seems to have gone okay, and his personal officer's taken him for a tour of the unit now. That gives us what ten inmates now on the uh, on the roll. Although we've only got eight of them, because Sykes is still down the segregation unit, completing his punishment. Uh, although he's going to be coming up at the weekend, so that should take us back to nine. Richards is still down there and uh, doesn't seem to be much prospect of him coming back. If, if anything, I think the staff's morale is better than mine <laughs> just now. The Winston McAllister argument, I think, is going to go on and on and on. <laughs> and that could end in tears or it uh, it could resolve itself but they're, they're kind of like two icebergs that uh, aren't rushing to be melted do you know mm -hmm. red is joe the greek frank winston is serving life for murder he was here a week mm -hmm. and they shanghaied him from me he went to manchester i was at manchester and i lay down with him yeah, just I, like I, i'm not certain i think i vaguely heard the name yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. what about um uh, albany have you been albany albany yes i was at albany in 19 uh, 1986, uh, I think I was at Albany for a short period of time. No, I wasn't there too long actually. Uh, I didn't particularly like the. Still on control lock, Albany, yeah. it? Not anymore. They've, they're back on the keys. I thought they were on like only six at a time, slot out. And the riots. Well, I got there just after the riots.
we've been going for about six months now. Um, it's very much an experimental thing. Uh, the proof of the pudding will be come back in 12 months' time if there's a, a number of inmates who are getting stuck in and making good progress. We can put an argument to the prison department that this way of dealing with inmates is a good one, a positive one. Um, there'll probably be further units built. If it doesn't work here, however, uh, with all the resources that we've got and the high staffing ratio that we've got, I think it could well be back to the drawing board and the prison department might think it's not been worth the investment. I came from the block straight onto the wing and of course it was mind-blowing with all this uh, new uh, t colour TVs, videos and Oh, you can you can order a video like the first night you seen the colours of the cartoon like I want to keep the TV and you, the you, 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 you <laughs> I, was, I was just going to go smash like you used to enjoy watching the ads. Oh yeah, this is what the ads I was watching. I was watching the ads. I haven't seen any for three years, and because of the amount of uh, hassle got down the block and everything, and when you see it, it's like it hypnotises you that the, the colours and everything, and it brings out the, the aggression, and of course. Uh, He's sitting there like, you know, it's like a, a, a drunk junkie uh, um, withdrawn from his junk, like, you want to kick the TV in. Uh, no, I yeah. Yeah. These people have been fighting um, the system for a long, long time. When they come here, we don't fight back. We try and negotiate things through. Uh, so we may have to give a little bit of ourselves away. We say, right, so you don't want to clean, but will you do something else? Will you do this for charity? Will you do that for, for another cause or whatever? Okay. We'll do art therapy, yes, eh? <laughs> yeah. When they look for an argument, they won't find one. Where normally, perhaps, it would have been nicked in another establishment, they don't get nicked in here. Um, but it's not just about that, it's about the fact that we get them to explain their behaviour away, we talk them through it. Don't be too precious with it, bash it around a bit. Attitudes may stay the same, but well, as far as possible we, we, we try and change their, their behaviour to something that's more acceptable. At the end of the day they're going to have to go back to a dispersal um, on normal location and survive there. You know, this, this is the first time in five years when I've come through the prison to find it, to talk to an officer. Uh, this sort of talking, I mean, in the dispersals, it's not heard of, mate. You know? Well, I remember you once sent, uh, sent to me before that, um, you know, two or three years ago, there was no way that you would ever respond to me or any other officer. It's true, you, you had a, a complete hatred yeah, for, it's, it's for prison staff. That, it's, they make you bitter, it's the things that they do in the prisons to people. Oh. Can you just give us a few instances, outline what? What exactly it is that upsets you so much? Well, when you've been in a body belt, when you strip somebody in a body belt and you put them in a strip cell, and then they, they can throw buckets of cold water over you and kick you and, and beat you and do things like that, which has happened in the jails and which does happen, it's still happening. Yeah. Well, in all the time that I've been in the job, I've never ever seen um, mistreatment. But you know it has gone on. Business. Well, I've been told it's gone on. Yeah. But, you know, I can I can honestly say that I've never ever seen a prisoner mistreated and I wouldn't, or ill-treated, and I wouldn't, but I wouldn't allow it for that matter. I'm saying uh, Because it, it's, it, it's, an, it makes us unprofessional. Mm. Because I took over as your personal officer, what, two months ago now, mm. and we haven't really had that much contact, um, through one reason or another. I, I didn't really know what your, what your form was, you know, what your claim to fame was. Um, you just give me, if you like, a brief outline of what um, what led you to pick up your sentence in the first place. Because I know you started off with nine months. I was, I was doing nine months for a charge, as I was, I was concerned. But I wasn't, wasn't guilty. It was just a normal fight that the other guy started. So I wasn't intent on doing the time. Mm. So I broke out, broke out of knowledge. And when I'm out, I've done robberies, armed robberies and all that. But uh, as, as bad as the crimes I do do, I don't affect my crimes on women or children and things like that. Yeah. It's just, you know, men, what, I'm, you know. What were the armed robberies? A bank in the post office. And was there any females involved in that? There was females in the bank, but the guns weren't pointed at the females. You didn't actually threaten the I wouldn't point a gun at a female. Yeah. It was always at the men yeah. in the place. 
And uh, when I've got caught and they've got us back in a prison, it's been the... Because I've broke out of Norris Prison, that's where it's all started, the tit for the tat there. Mm. They've got more of the hunt for me escaping than what I've done. Yeah. So it's been fighting with them through like that. Do you actually it. feel as if, if you'd have ever been threatened while you were pulling off these robberies that you could have actually pulled the trigger, whether it be with a man, not, or, not man or, or a woman? Oh, no, not for a woman. You don't need to use a gun on a woman. But for the men, I would shoot to the legs. I would shoot, but I wouldn't uh, shoot to kill. I wouldn't shoot to kill. Yeah. Unless it was a policeman or someone like that coming in, because they'd be coming in to do this business. Yeah. But I'd always go for a one shot. Yeah. You know, the legs or something like that. But to be honest, you, prior to prior to your nine months, I didn't, you know, I didn't know anything. As far as I could see, you didn't have any real form that we that we would need to worry worry ourselves about, even necessarily the police. Am I am I wrong so, on that? So or what, did you have more? Well, if did you have more form? Well, why am I cat A high risk? Why am I the only cat A high risk in this prison? Category A high risk. Why am I the only one in this prison? Well, I think possibly it's because of the uh, the actual escape attempts and uh, the successful escapes that you've, you know, managed in the past. Well, it's, it's still, I mean, you've got somebody like Freddie who can kill some people, and murderers and, and real bad cases. Yeah. And then and they're, they're all right. I just escape and I'm a high risk cat, eh? like a terrorist cat. Eh? Fred Lowe has been out of institutions for only 44 days since he was 16. He's now 32 and serving two life sentences and 20 years for grievous bodily harm, aggravated burglary and attempted robbery. He received a third life sentence for the manslaughter of an inmate at Gartry Prison. Today, for the first time, he's chosen to talk about that killing to psychologist Tom Smith. I've gone downstairs, says, uh, give some scissors out of the office boss, so I just want to trim the beard, so he gave me them. And uh, I called him in the, uh, the uh, cell, says, oh, I've got a cup of tea for your coffee, or one of word anyway. So uh, when he came in, I said to him, uh, the, what have you, you, you been saying? Uh, you're going to do this, that and the other. Well, I've got news for you, pal. You're not going to do it, I'm going to do it, you. So I stabbed him 30 times in the throat, uh, blacked his both his eyes, split his head, skull open once or twice, just generally jumped up and down on his face. I was about 18 stone then. Um, kicked him Why? under the bed. Why? Well... Why did he take so much? He, he, he was just... Uh, he would opened his mouth at the wrong time. There was a lot of stirring up by other lads, and I was annoyed at what had happened to me, like, you know, double life and everything for nothing. If you tell a man, if you tell a man he's, he's dangerous so many times, and so many times he believes it, and he eventually... Isn't it true that at the time you were, you, you said something like, um, if I'm going to do a life sentence, I might as well do it for killing somebody? Oh, yeah, that was part of it. There was a, there was a, there was a lot of things. That was part of it. I suppose it was, a, it, it was a mature way of getting me on back in the system, saying, well, you gave me double life for nothing. You might as well give me a life for something. There you are. Do what you want. But the, the poor guy involved, it was generally known at the time that he was an unfortunate case who shouldn't have been in prison in the first place. Mm. Um, everybody was saying, um, what he shouldn't be here, he should be in a special hospital. Why did you well, pick on him? He was never really a threat to I anybody. I, I didn't pick on him. He just came across my um, horizon, your horizon, whatever. He came across me um, because of all the threats he'd been issuing to me over the years. Do you feel at the time of the offence you were a psychopath or behaving psychopathically? From the point of view of somebody who is supposedly using that label to enjoy taking human life, 
There was never, ever any suggestion in my mind that I was ever a psychopath, if one wants to use that criterion. I could have perhaps understood some people being rather uncertain as to whether or not I was. But I certainly have never considered myself psychopathic if one takes the criteria that one gets a special enjoyment out of killing. No such enjoyment have I ever had. I have never found any pleasure out of any such thing. I know there's still bad feeling between you and McAllister, and a lot of that surrounds Brenda. Yeah, I know that. I've been trying to take the edge off it. If Brenda sits in a TV room with anybody, I'm not going to tell her not to do that as long as she's doing her teaching job. It happened again today. It's, it's, it's and I told you the other day yeah, and you've done nothing about it. That, that, hang on. There's an argument between you and McAllister that's been going on for some time now. We've taken a lot of the heat out of the situation. The governor said to me last night how well we had done as a unit and how you, how well you had done as an individual to get back on the unit without a blow up, yeah? The matter's not resolved, I know that. It's going to take us a bit longer to crack that one. But it's a very complicated one. As Eric said, the fact that Brenda has agreed to go back teaching with you after the problems are in the year is very big progress. That's a really good step. Now, the rest of it we've got to work at, and that's, good, that's not going to happen overnight. Yeah, but I'm all I'm saying to you, why haven't you sat her down and said, I don't think this is right? You're afraid to upset her? No. Mm. No. I, I, well, why I, have it been done, no. Eric? Softly, softly, catch your monkey. You don't, you, sometimes you can't front things out just like that. Why can't this be fronted no, out, no, even no, though this has gone on, on for months? No. no. Because I, it's going to cause other ripples with you and Dave, man. That we're trying to avoid at the moment. We're trying to get everybody living harmoniously in the place. Yeah, and it doesn't matter how it affects me. Frank, Frank. As long as the unit no. runs smooth, you're no, not worried no, about no, how it affects no, me. No, I was the one who had to do me lay no. down at Manchester. I had to lay on a block at Manchester, right? And I'm back now, and no. every step, I've got to behave myself perfect. I've done everything you've asked me. Everything you've asked me since I've been back. Nothing wrong, I've done nothing wrong. When I come to you with a problem, I don't get no solved. It don't get solved. That's, that's, that's not true. No, I don't expect you to go on class with Frank at this stage. It's far too early. I wouldn't go him at any stage. Mm. Well, fair enough. I've sold it at Norbury. Fair enough, but you know, what, you know what the problem is, and the fact that I am going to be working with him from now on. Yeah, I know what the problem yeah. is. Like, it sister, like a sister Norbury, no, I'm not going any classes with him for what he did to me last time. If I'm not in any classes with him, he can't do me no damage. As for yeah. grassing and telling lies. Because I want to hurt him. That's all I want to do with him. I just want to hurt him. And as soon as I touch him, I get moved. And that's me back in segregations. Mm -hmm. And I, I ain't going to give him that satisfaction. Exactly. But I want him to come to me. But what's to say, even if he didn't, you didn't resolve the problem? Oh, I you would. still wouldn't lose this. I was... As in being on the unit. Well, that, uh, I'll face it when it comes. I'll face it when it comes. I ain't always going to be here anyway. <sighs> no, but you want to progress from here. Brenda's going to turn it round. She started turning it round today. Since your return to the unit, she's been turning it round. OK. Yeah. All right, we'll leave it like that. Anyway. I've got this for over tea. Right. You're going to take it up over tea? Yeah. Oh, well, that's all right. He you broke know. this. No, you broke it. I never broke it. Well, John Rose, broke what it. did John Rose do? John Rose broke the fire. Yeah, I know, because he showed me how to break Don't it. Don't forget, it's the middle about the hard one. I'm just going to finish it. I've got the petition. Oh, right. All right. See you later, Frank. Right. Yeah. Well, it's different here. It's uh, mind games. Oh, come on. It is, it's, it's my game. It's all, it's all nice. You see in the morning, when you get up in the morning, you're walking down the stairs, <laughs> there must be about 20 officers that says good morning to you. It's never more to than see 12. The response, <laughs> what response they're going to get. How are you going to be today? Yeah. Good morning, Dave. Good morning. We're just morning. being civil. That's not mind games. We haven't got. No, the but intelligence it's a different, it's a different approach games. to what people have been used to. Yes, of course it is. They've been used to all different. Now they're getting a different approach to it. Yeah. It's all there. Uh, being nice, you know. Yeah. It's a bit hard when people have been all bad to you. Was that what you found really hard when you first came here? Yeah. You stupid. Open that gate. Open that gate. Thank <laughs> you.
There are often times when I have been frightened on the unit. There was an incident once when an inmate came into the room with a knife which had been broken. Um, and he was basically just telling me about this knife that had been broken, but as he came into the room, I didn't know what to expect. If you could, or go down on to the block and ask him where it is. Okay. I am the only full-time member of staff um, on the unit who's a female, which does have its drawbacks. inmates relate to me in different ways and obviously that can cause a lot of problems especially if a member of the team or a, one of the inmates has difficulties relating to female staff because in a lot of cases it might be the first time they've had the opportunity to talk to a woman in years. D-Wing is slopping out. This is the everyday scene in the rest of Hull Prison. No lavatories in cells here and no association for some on this overcrowded wing. It houses 200 convicted and unsentenced prisoners. They're in their cells for up to 23 hours a day. The contrast with A-Wing is startling. It's led to resentment against the special unit's 26 prison officers, all volunteers. There's a lot of stick going about in the rest of the prison They're saying that we don't know how to say no to these people. And yet the people who are saying it would never, they don't want to come and work in here. Mm. And yet sometimes it, you think about it, is it worth it? The, the classic, they call it the Wendy House. Yeah. Once you've worked in here, I think a lot of your attitudes you take out into a normal prison setting. And then I think it makes you into a better person, probably a better officer as well. It makes you better able to deal with uh, aggression especially face-to-face -face aggression, face-to-face -face violence. I mean, we're all in the worst of the worst now. We all the worst from the dispersal. That's manageable, don't yeah. really? But uh, whether we change him, we'll have to wait and see. It's dribbled down the side a bit, but that doesn't matter. It won't deter from the, the taste of it, won't deter from any of it. All right? And you don't have to eat it, but just to garnish it. Little tiny piece of parsley. All right, Pete. Thanks, Bridget. This is the only unit at Hull where prisoners cook for themselves. Right. Well One afternoon a week, the chaplain's wife, Sue like Jin, mustard. gives the men a practical lesson. Right. And you don't like mustard. You won't taste it in the sauce. Well, I promise you, you won't actually taste that mustard in the sauce. It just brings out the flavour. Right, like it's very hot. Yeah. All right? That's fine. If you take all those, the rest yeah. live down here, don't they? Yeah. The officers here in the cons have no hesitation in turning their back on me while I've got these knives. And uh, even though my track record has been rather heavy in using uh, knives on people. Check on knives, Yeah. I've got a lot of trust that way, and uh, I tend to respect it. Barry, after, let's go down the seg unit. Let's go down the seg unit. One of A-Wing's inmates is returning today from the segregation block. He's an ex-heavyweight boxer serving two and a half years for burglary and assault and three and a half years for assaulting staff at Hull. On the day he went to the block, a restraint team with helmets and shields stood by in case of trouble. But the special unit's officers persuaded him to go quietly. All right, yep. Now, in an extraordinary move, they've successfully appealed to the Board of Visitors over his punishment, and his solitary confinement has been reduced by eight days. Paul Sykes was disciplined for abusing a prison works officer who came into the special unit. Later, the charge was quashed. As soon as I got here, I said, you must keep the screws out the main nick from coming in. Well, I said that for a reasonary. I know what vindictive <laughs> some of them are. And I am in the nick now for belting a screw here. Well, two screws here. And if they don't keep out that, if they don't allow to wander in, I've got no protection. 
Are you with me? Now then. The screw's coming out of the main nick. Gone in the office. Paul Sykes has hit me. Three days later, I'm nicked for assault. I said, I'm not playing. I'm not playing. Go ahead with it. <clears throat> Go ahead with it. You put some kind of game it is. I don't know what kind of game it is, but I'm not playing. I'm watching through the window and I see the board of visitors come in. Four of them. Two of them had done my parole application, did my parole application. And the other two have strolled about the wing when it first opened, wandering about, smiling benignly and saying like, uh, how lucky you are, what lucky chaps you are. And I've given them all a coating, every one of them give them a coating. Told them that they're here to protect prisoners' rights. That's what they're there for, to see the system doesn't trample on them. That's what they're in the, in the, in the job for. I said, everywhere you go, this statutory rights has been obliterated. And what does he say? And when he was the Minister of Prisons, he said, it's not our policy to let inmates know the rules. Well, I know the rules, yeah. And they should know the rules, and they should make sure that the system plays to them. And I've given them all a coating. These are the lots that's now coming in to try me. The charge isn't assault now, it's abusive and threatening language. Yeah. So I thought, yeah. So I've written it out now, my statements. I deny all allegations, and the days have gone when a, when a screw could... Uh, say you've said something or done something, he's got to have some proof. And the governors can't say, well, if he said you were riding around the landing on a motorbike, okay. I'd want to know where the petrol come. Them days <coughs> have gone, all that carry on. Yes. Yeah. So I've written it all down and it's a straightforward, by law, case dismissed. Paul Sykes has hit me. If it had have happened at school, when it happens at school, and they run to the teacher, Fred Smith's hit me. Just have a look at him. No marks, no anything, just, well, go and hit him back then. That's what they say, yeah. And that's what they should have said to him. And of all the nicks in the northern region that couldn't possibly get one farther away from Liverpool than here, know. right at the other side of the country. He was a big so, John McGranigan says he's been beaten and labelled a sex offender. He's serving two life sentences for rape and 70 years for charges including aggravated burglary and robbery. He says he's innocent of all but one charge of wounding and he smashed up other units in protest. Justice, the lawyer's organisation, has taken up his case with the Home Secretary. Every criminal is supposed to say he's innocent, so you hear it all the time. So for me to say I'm innocent, so oh, yeah, we've got another one. But as you can see for yourself there, you have read the documents. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, I mean, it seems to me they're uh, going into great detail about the, the lack of forensic evidence. Uh, the lack of mention of your stutter, all those things. Yeah. The, the lack of. Well, was there a lie detector done at the time? Lie detector done. No, uh, since since I've, I've you know come in prison, I've been on the lie detector, sure. and just I passed out with uh, flying colours. And I think one other thing, if I remember from what you were saying the other day, even the evidence about the size of your penis, which was quite an important bit of evidence. In yeah, the case, it's it's funny to you me. Know, the few it's the it's not funny it's to me, but I've yeah. got to take I've got to take some. Some stick for that, obviously, because sure. all the boys are laughing like that. Oh yeah, mm. but they, they they put over that this man was an enormous three women. I mean, the women did suffer. Don't get me wrong. Mm. I mean, I've no, I've no, no, got, got, I've no against these these women. They, 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 what they did go through was mm. was horrible. But uh, they, they did say the three of them that the man had a large phallus, mm. enormous. So I mean, I'm not small, but. Uh, I've been quite happy if I'd been like that, I think. <laughs> but you now have a certificate saying you're at least average? Yeah, I have the official you know, figures. Uh, okay. So you feel that if you're accepting any part of the sentence, it's like accepting your guilt. But do you think the knock-on from that in recent times has been that you get a reputation yeah. for being, as the system would see, the troublemaker and a disruptive oh, yeah, and subversive? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. They created me. What I mean, what I am, they created me. Sure. Reports of that, and they wrote reports about me, and that's some of the reports like, are the rubbish. Uh, and they, and I got just a prison, and just before I arrived there, the the staff are thinking I got to get some big uh, Tyson kind of coming in by their own reports. They've wrote what they they've oh. made themselves frightened by their own reports. <laughs>
It's uh, an induction meeting. We we'll just spoke out about your first week, how we've seen it. I think, I think uh, it should be a gradual thing. I think we've, we've, we've said that we'd expect you to be with us at this time next year. Beyond that, you know, we can't ever really say because that's something that, that we debate amongst ourselves and talk about with headquarters. Are there any problems with the other inmates whilst you've been, been here? No, no, not as yet anyway, <laughs> to be equipped. Are there any concerns that there might be? Not particularly, no. But uh, I can't read the future anymore. No. <laughs> when you look at it, Paul, I wonder whether it's a waste, it's wasted on these people, whether it would be, wouldn't be better if uh, the new lads, you know, and when I say new lads, I don't mean uh, new, I'm talking about new in the crime if we spent a bit more time with them and tried to steer them and give them these facilities and all like that. It seems like um, these always seem to be getting the best and, yes. and we, we treat them with kid gloves. Well, the prisoners do get a raw deal in financial terms compared mm. with this lot, mm. but we're, we're really taking people from the top end who would mm. be causing problems in the other dispersals. Mm. They'd be stuck in the segregation units or causing no end of problems. You, I mean, you know that from, from when yeah, this well, place was a Well, this is where I feel that I justify being here on this unit, in my own opinion, and, and quite a few of the staff have shown this themselves, that we justify it by the fact that, um, you know, we've done this person and we've seen these troublemakers on the landings and who can be a pain in the backside. You said to me, no. And I thought it was a sharp no. Do you get me? To me, I thought, I don't like the way she said that. And I'd give me the amp. Do you follow me, to be honest with you? Because it's wrong again, because... Why is it wrong, Frank? I, should be, I shouldn't be affected by it. <laughs> I shouldn't be affected because she said no. But to me, I took it... Because I was so obsessed with... Exactly. Because I was so obsessed with the atti your attitude and Max's attitude, right? thinking that you were siding against me, do you follow me, and did not want me on the unit or whatever, and on top of that, when I come back, you refused to teach me, but you give you reasons that you was frightened of me. You suspected that I might blow up, do you follow me? You wasn't sure how I would react when I come back from Manchester. To me, I felt you completely against me. Not just that everybody else was against me on the unit when I first came back, but you was against me. You follow me as well. And I thought, somebody's got into your head. I suspected somebody got into your head. Right? I didn't look at, I didn't just look at it. I didn't say to myself, well, it's me who's got into her head because I've caused it, because I've frightened her. Do you follow me? I couldn't see that then. Do you understand that, Brenna? You, you can now. Yeah, of course I can see it. I can see it now, but it's still very difficult. It's not an easy thing. Whenever I look, I always seem to see you when you're on the wing in the company of that man. Or he's always in the company of you. But that's no, because I'm... that's what you're looking for, yeah. Frank. But Tom, it's a fact because members of staff notice it. Members of staff complain about it. Well, this is you the... pointed out to certain members of staff who you Quite know were siding with you. Yeah. Oh, come on. Yes. Uh, Brendan, you can't say um, that. Yes, Trevor Drew but I time myself. You want to know what I am doing for every five minutes of the day when I first started on the wing? I would just, I would pick up a telephone. Who's that? What are you talking about? Where, who, where, why, what, when? And you, I wouldn't would off the wing. You want to Brenda, know? Would you agree that you have admitted you spend more time, you have spent more time in the company of one man more than others? Would you agree to that? Because I know for a fact, yeah. Brenda, you have admitted it. Why then have you done it? Can you answer the Why? Question? Well, in, in a week when I've maybe arranged to meet some other people, like I've I set up an interview with another inmate a week ago, he didn't turn up. I sat downstairs for an hour like a lemon on my own. But, what, but Brenda, there's um, nothing wrong with that. Do you mind, Tom, please, for a moment? Let's look at the facts that wind me up, Tom.
Why are you listening to me now? You have just told me I dig female staff out. I want you to prove that because I'm not going to give up on that now. I will go out of my way. I will go out of my way to prove Frank, you are wrong. Look at your finger. Look at your threats to Brenda. It's Can not a threat. Brenda? It's not a threat. That She's just accused me of something. So is that, is that what you're saying to me? Is that what you're bringing Frank, up to me in the past? Down. You're telling me I'm using females in prison to f my own kicks. Is that what you're trying to say no, to me? No, that's not what she said. Sit so what down. are you saying to me then? Why did you bring it up? You Brenda, insulted me there, Brenda. Do you want to stop it? You insulted me, Brenda, and you know you insulted me. You pushed her into it, Frank, as you push her into everything. Why did she bring it up then? Because you threatened her. Me, exactly. No. How did I threaten her? What did because I threaten her? Because you're giving her this all the time, I'm Frank. I'm not threatening her. I'm not threatened her. He made life an absolute misery for Brenda in there. And if she's been getting that for the last six months, nobody, not, not any one of us, not Brenda because she's female or anything, not any one of us has a right to take the amount of shit that she was getting because he wanted to impose himself on her. Thanks. If Brenda's been taking that amount of shit for the last few months, um, it's hardly surprising um, that she, you know, that she experiences a lot of stress and feels a lot of pressure. So I was there this morning and I was able, I like to think, to, to control a little bit of the flow. Frank showed his true colours there. I have to say this, Trev. Sure. And he went in there with all the good intentions in the world. I'm convinced of that. I'm convinced that he went in with good intentions. I wonder how, how much he meant these good intentions because they very quickly evaporated. And what I saw there was not so much a temper control problem. There was a bit of it there. He did lose his rag a little bit, but it was, it was a lot more than that. What are we going to tell him, 1074 or what? Oh, hang on, you need to set your team up. And I'm going to get on the telephone to Regent <coughs> to see about his move. Right. You want right. him to walk down the second one? Yeah. 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 Could do stuff on the landing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you, you and Matt and me, yeah. just to one side. Yeah. Um, right. Right. Do you feel to me? Well, just keep away. Discreet distance. Within two hours, Frank Winston was on his way to another jail because of threats from the other inmates. Three weeks later, David McAllister made his escape from the jail. He was caught in London after five days and returned to Hull. Within hours, he'd smashed up a cell in the hospital wing and he was whisked away to a high security prison. An inquiry at the prison reprimanded two officers for security failures, but A-Wing's regime hasn't changed. The experiment continues. Go, 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 go. 